Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our second video on laminar flow between two plates. The reason why we need to make a second video is because now we're going to talk about a more general equation of this laminar flow. In the previous example, we saw that we have two plates, one plate being pulled to the right, the other plate typically being kept in place, and so we can see that the velocity of the fluid between the two plates will change, and there's a linear change. The slope is linear, so like in a y equals mx plus b kind of slope, and because of that, we can write that the force required to move the top plate at a constant velocity is equal to the coefficient of, of um, viscosity, which is mu, times the area of the plate, times the velocity of, that the plate is being moved at, divided by the depth or the height of the fluid between the two plates. But what if the fluid does not change velocity in the linear sense like that? So on the right here, I've drawn a new situation where you can see that the, that the relationship here between the velocity as a function of height, and of course L is still the uh, height between the two plates, the distance between the two plates, meaning the height of the fluid, and you can see that the velocity does not change linearly like that. So how do you deal with the equation then? We know that delta V divided by delta L is not a constant, that slope is not a constant. So the way we deal with it is that, well, we can make it instantaneous. We can pick any particular point on here, and then the slope at that point will be the slope of a function. Notice that this line here will basically be some sort of function that can be defined, and therefore we can say that at any point in time we have a change in velocity with respect to, not with respect to time, but we have a change in velocity with respect to position in L. So as a function of position, the velocity will be some amount, and so we can say that at any point in, at any point in the fluid, from here to here, we have a velocity, and the change of the velocity changes as a function of position. And therefore, we can take this equation right here, instead of thinking this as being a constant, the velocity divided by L being a constant is now going to be this. The force required to move a plate to the right at a constant speed is going to be the coefficient of viscosity times the area of the plates times dV dL. And that will now become what we call the general equation. When you move a plate at the surface of a fluid like that, and so the fluid is really stuck between two plates, and that will then give us the force required as a function of the change in velocity as a function of L. All right. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about the units of viscosity. So in CGS units, that means centimeters, grams, and seconds, we have a unit called poise, named after Poiseuille, one of the famous lady physicists, and a, po and a poise is defined as a dyne times seconds divided by centimeters squared. If you want to convert that into MKS units, a dyne is 10 to the minus fifth newtons, seconds of course are still the same, and a centimeter is 1 one hundred of a meter, so we have meters squared, which is 10 to the fourth compared to centimeters squared. When you work it all out, you find that you need 10 poise to be set equal to 1 newton times seconds per meter squared, so the units of in MKS is in 10 poise for 1 newton times second divided by meter squared, and it's 1 poise for 1 dyne times seconds per centimeter squared. Most of the experiments are done in, in a miniature scale, so CGS units tend to be quite common when we talk about viscosity. There's also what we call a centipoise, which is 10 to the minus 2 poise. Centi, of course, is like centimeters, 1 100, and sometimes we even use units in micropoise for fluids that do not have much viscosity at all, such as gases. So in that case, we tend to talk about micropoise. So here we have the very same equations we did before, but if it's a nonlinear change in velocity with respect to position from the top to the bottom plate, we use the V dL instead of the ratio VL, which here, of course, would be a constant. And that's now become the general equation. In the next video, we'll show you an example of how to apply these equations, and then you'll get a, more, a better feel for them. That's how we do that.